The organisation previously had approached um, savings and efficiency targets um, by the divisions designing their own schemes. We have seven clinical divisions. So that led, it has been successful previously in delivering um, CRPs, the sort of siloed approach, if you like, but the low hanging fruit and the easier schemes have really, we've yielded that opportunity and we now need to look for something that was a different approach to getting our, our savings. Um, we believe that required a pan-organisational approach to change and efficiency management for clinical services in particular. The, the transformation projects and, and the way we're approaching looking at how we can make efficiencies is very different now to what it was a few years ago and the approach is largely around having a much more cross-cutting approach to the efficiencies. Um, previously there were very much um, schemes that were done in isolation of other areas and so that's where I think we are now as opposed to, to previously. This is much more of an overall trust approach rather than just looking at divisions and specialities. So that's the key difference. The project management office uh, concept was something that we thought about probably about a year ago. Um, we took our concept to our trust board um, who supported us going forward with um, the approach of introducing project management office. Um, we established that in January of this year, so eight months ago, and um, we have been developing the team over the last eight months. Yeah, so Samwell and West Birmingham Trust had already had several years of um, like CIP style savings. Um, these were very siloed, so they were focused very much within a division. Um, and there was some saving activity was happening, but it wasn't transformational. It was looking at what happened within that division and not the pathway of a patient through the many divisions that they would uh, pass through as part of their patient care. Um, so the difficulty was that they could unlock stuff that they had control over themselves, but they couldn't uh, unlock the savings that were associated with um, the preceding processes and the following processes of, uh, of the patient pathway. Okay, so when we started with the trust, there was no PMO in place. Um, they had some pro outline project charters but there was nothing managing the governance. Once we'd finished the identification of the projects we quickly then worked towards a rough and ready PMO. Uh, not as good as the one we have now but it was just we needed to get some governance quickly to show what we were doing when, how would we measure it, what were the issues we were having. Um, that started as sheets of A3 uh, blue tacked onto a piece of, uh, onto a wall. Um, and then we slowly developed that so that it became slicker and more transparent about our status. The silo mentality in, uh, in terms of approaching savings plans meant that the schemes were very traditional. It was about taking money out rather than transforming services. The approach we've got now um, seeks to take cash out of the system by reducing waste and duplication of effort um, and taking the quality improvement opportunities in the work we're doing which wasn't part of a savings programme before. PMO for the Sandwell executives really means that they have an oversight of how the transformation plan is progressing and how it's delivering, and also the issues we're having in the programme. Every transformation programme in every industry has its issues, and you're trying to change the way a, an organisation delivers savings and do, the way they do their daily business. Um, so it's really important that the exec have transparency about how that's progressing, where we're getting results and the successes, and where we're finding it difficult. And the PMO allows that transparency for the exec, that they get that snapshot once a week for one hour with the exec. We review each individual's uh, programme and how that's progressing, and we can unlock where those high-level problems are and where the successes are. It's fantastic. We've got a programme that's looking to take out £125 million over five years and we've got a lot of quality improvements to make within that programme. This gives me, on a weekly basis, a view of all of those schemes. Um, so my team report by exception um, as to where particular programmes of change are. They seek executive support on a weekly basis rather than to wait for um, that discussion to take place maybe on a monthly basis. So I feel very in touch with the programme. Um, I think it also enables the pr programme team to go out on behalf of the executive to sponsor and facilitate these change programmes rather than to feel that they're, that they're representing ju just, just themselves and the team. It's really important also that it's under the operational 
um, director because I'm responsible for the delivery of clinical services across our operational groups and therefore having the two under the same executive lead really, really sort of sponsors and, and gives permission for, for that approach to work. For the people on the ground, the PMO represents an opportunity to do two things. One, to show the good work they're achieving and the results they're getting through their KPIs. But the second aspect, it's, it's their platform. It's their platform to escalate concerns and try to resolve problems at that senior level. All the way through the delivery of the transformation programmes, we will find blockers. It's normal business that we're trying to um, orchestrate a big significant change in the organisation. As we go through that process then we will get a lot of issues get, get flagged up and it's through um, the PMO that the working level have an opportunity to escalate up the big concerns so we can try and unlock those at exact level. It's because what we can do now with the PMO is we have a much more structured approach for each project area that we're looking at. Um, the wall is just part of visualising what that structure looks like whereas that wasn't always visible previously. And it also um, helps us to show what we're doing. It provides visibility of where we are with our projects and it also gives us an opportunity to demonstrate how we're performing because there's no point in having a project unless you've got the metrics to show where you're, you're making the improvements. But it's also an opportunity for the team to be able to escalate any concerns to the executives in a timely manner. So we, we have this meeting for the executive sponsors um, every week and it's a set meeting and it's you know we're all there and we would all use that opportunity to raise any issues or to get a steer from the execs if that's what we're looking for. Um, this board to me is, is formally a weekly intervention but we've just moved offices where the executive team and the uh, PMO are in one open agile working space so this is a place that everybody uses so it can be looked at on a daily basis and certainly I'll reference it if I, because it's in the place I work all the time if I'm interested in one particular project. I think the individuals that benefit most from PMO are the people who use it every day. So we have our transformation managers. This is their central focus point for everything they do every day to be able to show it on an, an individual plan, to help the plan drive what they do every day but then also their opportunity to be transparent to the wider organisation and the senior levels of the organisation about what's on track, what's delivering, what's not delivering and where we need help. On a, well, it helps to keep some structure to what we're focusing on and helps us to stay within the scope of what we're trying to do because when you're doing any type of redesign or transformational work, you can get pulled in lots of different directions. But this is a reminder and a, and a structure to what we're focusing on um, but also giving us an opportunity to look at where else we need to go. So it helps us to stay within where the top priorities are for the project and not to go off at a tangent, I suppose. Yeah, we've had um, some examples with some programmes um, where we had got to a point where there was a critical, what we call a pinch point. So we had done all the foundation work that should release the savings. But the final savings required the organisation to bite a bullet, to do something that was difficult, that finally resulted in fundamentally reducing some of the internal costs. The PMO quickly showed that the organisation didn't quite grasp that as quickly as they should. And very quickly we were reporting that we were on programme with all the preparation work, but the final pinch point of, sort of realising the savings was delaying because the organisation was slow to react to that. Through being able to see that at exec level, we were able to su support the exec in how to approach what was a very difficult subject. The result was we're now back on track and uh, catching back, not quite on plan, but catching back to those original targets. The benefits I've seen since we've established the PMO are that we've got better controls of our change programmes. Um, that's through um, having clear timelines that you can see behind me for some of our significant change programmes making sure we have sight of the risks and quality benefits of those and dealing with exceptions in a really timely way so that this is a live programme. The other thing about the PMO, that the team represent an expert um, approach to change management and they are out within the organisation influencing change but also developing um, locally with divisions, clinical and non-clinical staff, the ability to lead change locally. One of the benefits of a PMO 
um, that looks something like this behind me is it's not complicated, it's not high tech and it's very transparent. This is in an environment where anybody within this organisation can come and have a look. We're completely transparent about the activity we're doing, we're completely transparent about the issues we're facing, the successes, the non-successes we're having. This style is uh, much more transparent and engaging for the organisation. I think every organisation can benefit from a PMO, but the importance about PMO is it's not one size fits all. Every organisation has its different needs and with KMMT what we strive to achieve is adapting the pure principles of a robust PMO to the individual organisation. Through that process we give the customer and the client what they need but it's founded on the pure principles of what makes a good PMO.